All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today I'm back in my Range Rover, which I've now owned for two whole years. So I thought I'd do a quick update video with it, and let you know how it's been. Has it been as unreliable as everyone says? Hmm, so-so, I would say, is the most honest answer. So-so. I've also been thinking, if I could go back in time, would I buy it again? Well, hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have an answer. I bought this 5-litre autobiography Range Rover as an approved used car from Land Rover of North West London in 2022. To be honest with you, white wouldn't have been my first choice of colour. I thought it was a little bit, a little bit of a wags car, but it only done 14,000 miles. I went to go and look at a grey one, Carpathian grey I think it's called, that was over in Stockport at a Mercedes dealer. It was exactly the same spec as this, but I preferred that colour. But that had done 38,000 miles, so I thought ultimately I really should go with a nice low mileage example. It just makes more sense. So I kind of put up with the white. Having said that, I like it. It stands out. And when it's clean, it does look really cool. I like it. I just don't think I'd have ordered it from new, from the factory, in white. But anyway. When I bought it, I think this had just had its first MOT, or a couple of months prior to that anyway. It just had its first MOT. And I loved it. I'd never had a car so new. Up to that point, I'd always had nine, eight, seven-year-old cars. Never something like this. And although I immediately fell in love with it, in fact, I think I mentioned this in a video at the time, I kind of... I think I was suffering with imposter syndrome. I think that's what it was. I couldn't quite believe my luck. But after a few months with it, I realised that actually I've worked for it and paying for it and all that sort of stuff. So that forget it. I'll just do what I want and enjoy it. And since that point, since that little flip has switched in my head, I have. As of today, it's done 37,300 miles. So I have done a lot of miles in this car. And as a result, I know it very well. And I still love it. There are days when I kind of fall out with it. I'll get onto that later. But for the most part, I do really like it. I suppose the first thing to mention with it then is the reliability. Now, Land Rovers have a terrible name, and Range Rovers in particular, for being unreliable cars. But I can categorically say this has never left me stranded. Not once. There's honestly never been an issue with the way it drives or performs. It's been spot on. However, there have been quite a few issues, a few niggly things, which I'll openly admit are completely unacceptable on a car of this value. I mean, when this car was new, it was well over £100,000. Everything should be perfect, shouldn't it? Especially one with this sort of history and this mileage. And yet it hasn't been. Before I tell you about all those niggles though, and there are quite a few, I need to say a quick thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video, let me just go through this puddle. There we go. Today's video is sponsored by Car Vertical. Now it's really important that you do a used vehicle check before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike. I've heard so many horror stories over the years and I have suffered a few myself, so it's definitely worth paying for one of these used vehicle checks. This will tell you whether it's ever been stolen, written off, had a mileage rollback, or has outstanding finance on it. In addition to that, it shows you all the previous MOT history, it shows you a bit more about the car, if it's ever been involved in an accident, sometimes it shows you photographs of the damage, it's just a really thorough check. And it isn't just a UK thing either, it checks hundreds of millions of cars across dozens of countries' databases. If you'd like to do one of these checks for yourself, and I'd highly recommend it, you'll save yourself 20% off each and every check that you do with my promo code, HIPEAK. Couldn't be easier, could it? High peak, all one word, and you get 20% off each and every check that you do. So thanks Car Vertical for sponsoring today's video. Right, back to this lengthy list of issues. The first two issues I had with this were after just a couple of months of owning it. I had the engine light come on. It wasn't running rough or anything, there were no symptoms, but the engine light was on. So luckily, because I bought this approved used, it came with a 12 month warranty, which you can then extend every single year, which I've done, and I will do again. Both those times the engine light came on, it was because of a faulty O2 sensor, so they were replaced, free of charge, under warranty. So it was quite a simple job. Had I not had the warranty in place, it would have cost me about £250 each time. I had an issue once with the driver's soft closed door, it just wouldn't pull it in. So I tried to drive to work, and it was, well, it just wasn't latching. So I had the alarm binging every couple of seconds, it was just annoying. And, of course, I couldn't lock the car. So I called Land Rover, got it sorted, the soft closed motor had failed, and they replaced it under warranty. You just go in here. So I probably wouldn't have done that really. This is one downside to this car. It's its size. It's very big and very wide. And these little narrow country lanes weren't built for it. Just bar, thank you. Then about nine or ten months ago, I ran it in for a service, and I was aware it was starting to make a whining noise. And I thought that was normal, it's a supercharged engine, and you always get a bit of a whine from the supercharger. And it's done it from day one, so I didn't think it was anything, you know, untoward. Anyway, it was you guys who drew my attention to it, because it just got louder and louder and louder. So when it was over at Land Rover Nutsford for a service, I asked them to check on it. Sure enough, some sort of pulley had failed, and it was the bearings in it had gone, so it was whining excessively. 
a bit like I'm doing in this video actually. Anyway, they replaced that under warranty while it was being serviced and now it is as quiet as a mouse. Had I known that wasn't normal, I'd have done it a lot sooner. But again, it didn't strand me. So not the end of the world. During the second year of ownership, I paid the £1,500 for the genuine Land Rover extended warranty. And I don't know whether that was good value or not. I just did it for peace of mind, basically, and I shall do it again, because you never know. But I don't think this year or the second year I've had my money's worth. The only thing to have failed in this second year is the driver's seat massage function. I'm aware this is about to sound very deaverish and very waggish, but this little button here gives you a nice back massage, and I use it all the time. All the time. It isn't a fad, I do genuinely use it every single time I'm in the car. It's just nice and pleasant. Anyway, I was in this car one day with a mate of mine, and he was, he was enjoying the passenger seat massage a little bit too much, if you ask me. So he was playing around with all the settings like this because there are five different settings for the massage feature. So I was having to play around with that as well. And then it just stopped working. But annoyingly, it stopped working when the massage seat was right out in its extended setting. So it kind of felt like you were on a, a cheap budget flight and there was a kid behind you, you know, digging his knees into the back of your seat. I don't know if you can see this, but there you go. It's basically an airbag system. So the airbags inflate and then deflate which gives you that nice massage sensation. Anyway, it failed, but only on the driver's side. So I called Land Rover Nutsford again, who were quite accommodating, booked it all in, and yes, the massage pack had failed, apparently. So they stripped the seat down, did it all under warranty, and I've got no idea how much that would have cost had I not had the extended warranty. They've given me a bill, which is in the glove compartment, but of course it's for zero pounds, zero pence, so I don't really know. But I expect that would have cost me 500 quid, most things at Land Rover are quite expensive, so I expect it would have been quite an expensive job. I'm happy to report that it's all fixed and working now, which means I can drive to work with what I can only describe as a human touch. Perfect if you crave that sort of thing. So by and large then, it has been reliable. Just save for those few little niggles, which do kind of ruin the whole experience. But the rest of the car, honestly, has been spot on. This is why they always appear bottom in the reliability surveys. It's things like this. Oh, actually, that's one more. That's one more thing. One day I got in this with my, uh, when my massage seat wasn't working, so I was in some pain with it anyway, but like Quasimodo. I drove to work and the sound system just wouldn't play any sound at all. I still got the screen, the lights were on, but nobody was home. So I spent 40 minutes with somebody's foot in my back with no music at all. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna get rid of this car. I'm sick of it, sick to death of it. But as I was driving to work, I was thinking, what am I going to replace it with? I don't want a GLE, I don't want an X5, I don't want a Q7, and I don't want a Porsche Cayenne. Once you've had something like this, anything else seems like a downgrade. I don't want a Land Cruiser because they're too rough and ready and too agricultural, so that wouldn't work. I don't want a Lexus RX because I'm not 75. A Bentley Bentayga's too flash and not really my style, to be honest. A Mercedes G-Wagon might be fine for Heidi and Audrina, but again, for me, I just feel like a bit of a jeb. Then you've got a Lamborghini Urus or an Aston Martin DBX, and they're just too much. I was driving to work the other day and saw Kerry Katona in a Urus. Don't really want one of those, do I? Plus, they're ridiculously expensive, way more than this. So no, they're for footballers and other crass people like that. So not really my style. So that's it, there's no real option. So I may as well stick with this. You know, <laughs> the only other car that I was considering, which is stupid, I didn't think of this at the time, was the new Land Rover Defender. Because every time I see one of those, I think that's really cool. But of course, it's the same manufacturer. You idiot, Matt. So you're gonna have the same issues. I think the best thing to do for me with this is just to stick with it. Appreciate that some days it will annoy you and other days it won't. But I think that's just cars in general. I've had enough of them over the years, all different makes and models, to know that some days they work fine and other days they just annoy you. One thing I would say though, is if you do want a Range Rover like this, make sure make sure you've got access to another car because then when it is in the garage for a couple of days it's of no inconvenience to you what else can i tell you then well performance is brisk it's 525 horsepower which means if you do this you then do this that's okay yeah that's points that's points i rarely drive like that to be honest but it's nice to know you can what else can I mention then? Oh, fuel economy. Now, fuel economy, being a five litre V8, is not good. My lifetime average with this over the last two years is 21.6. It's not great, is it? It's not bad for a car of this size with a lump in it like this, but it isn't enviable, is it? 
It costs 130, 140 pounds to fill up and it lasts me, well I mean last week it lasted quite a while because I wasn't here, but generally it lasts me five, six days. Yeah, it's not great. But I don't smoke, I don't drink an awful lot. If this is my uh, pleasure in life, so be it. Something else to mention is depreciation because that hasn't been great either. Now, when I bought this, it was about two weeks before the latest Range Rover was launched, so I knew I was going to take a hit. All of a sudden, if you buy the last of the old and then the new one comes out, it's not worth as much, it's common sense. And I knew that and I still pursued it. And just as I predicted, L405 prices have tanked. Of course, that hasn't been helped by how many of these have been stolen. It was rife a few months ago. I don't hear of it quite as often, but yeah, a few months ago, it was, it was every day, every single day. In fact, I heard a rumor, now forgive me because this might just be pub talk, but because of the embargoes with Russia, I heard that they were being stolen and exported to, or you know, shipped to Russia for parts because people in Russia with these cars can't get parts for them. I don't know how true that is. It's just something I heard. Happily, a few months ago, Land Rover listened to this and they offered a free recall, some sort of theft recall thing. So I booked it in again at Land Rover Nutsford, waited for an hour, had a nice cappuccino and it was all done. And I think it just means it's, it's less easy to steal. That's what, I, uh, that's what I hope anyway. Of course, the other thing to consider is the fact these have been nicked left, right and centre is that means that it's pushed up everyone's insurance premiums. Now, I don't want to sound smug, but it hasn't affected mine at all. It's not a penny more expensive than it was last year. Now, that is because I'm on a motor trade policy, or I have a motor trade policy, which is thousands and thousands of pounds a year anyway. And that covers me for test drives, all the stock I've got at work, public liability, camera equipment, everything's on it. So this being my own personal car is listed on that policy. When I renewed my policy a few months ago, my broker came out to see me and he said, the only thing that's changed with Range Rovers is if it's worth more than 70,000 pounds, which sadly this isn't anymore. If it's worth more than 70,000 pounds, my ex will go up from £500 to £2,500. But of course, it isn't, so it hasn't. So it hasn't changed. In terms of servicing costs and other consumables, tyres and brakes and all that sort of stuff, it hasn't been bad at all. It's due a service, actually, in another 2,000 miles. I had it done 8,000 miles ago, so it'll be due again in a couple of thousand miles. And every time I get it done, it's three or £400. It really doesn't break the bank. It isn't thousands and thousands like it would be with a Bentley. I've put a set of tyres on this during my ownership period and I went with proper tyres and they weren't too expensive. I think they were about 240 a side. Sorry, not a side, a corner. Both MOTs, this has had it sailed without a single advisor item, so it's all pretty good really, apart from those few niggly issues. But I still can't think of a single better car for this sort of money than this. It just does everything really well. So to answer my question that I posed at the start, if I were to go back in time, would I buy it again? Would I do it all over again? Well, I think in life in general, it's best not to dwell on the past. If you made the decision on the day, live with it. Look to the future rather than the past. So, with that in mind, yes, I'd do it all over again. Yes, it's big and thirsty and cumbersome and you have to back up around pubs on country lanes and all that sort of stuff when you've got a car coming the other way, but it's a really nice car. It still puts a smile on my face every single time I walk up to it and every single time I get into it. As long as my door shuts properly, my engine light's not on, and the radio works, we're all good. And you know what? I think this is the last Range Rover that still retains that Range Roveriness. The new one, I'm still not convinced. The styling just looks a bit odd. It doesn't look like a Range Rover, I don't think. It's too sort of blobby and misshapen. I'm convinced still that the L405 is one of the best Range Rovers ever made. It's now more of a luxury car than a Range Rover, but so what? That's what I like. Well, I think that's about it then, guys. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll leave the link below. By the way, here's an interesting thing to tell you, actually. I'm doing my first show. I'm going to Petrol Hedonism Underground, which is on the 13th and 14th of April down in Wembley. So I'm going to have a stall there, and I'll be doing a meet and greet, which sounds terribly arrogant, doesn't it? But people have asked for this kind of thing. So come and say hello. It'll be nice to finally put some faces to YouTube handles that I've seen over the years. So cheers, guys, for your support over the years. I do appreciate it. See you next time.